and that gets back into the complex personality of Roy Jones. But Roy had made his point. He had power when he needed it, control when he wanted it. He was undeniably his own man. He reached out again to his father to forge a new relationship on more equal terms, but Roy Jr. was rebuffed again. My father never wanted to know what he was doing, how he was progressing. He didn't want to know any of the details of his boxing career. I was there, but I wasn't physically there, you know what I mean? So I just kind of stepped back and watched it happen. If that went the wrong way, you the same. You didn't have to worry about nothing. Up next, a boxing heavyweight sparks a father and son reunion. His father would not let him fight Buster Douglas. It's just too much mass, you know what I mean? I just wouldn't run a Volkswagen into a Big Mac truck. It's just that simple. You're watching Roy Jones Jr. Beyond the Glory. After redeeming himself against Montel Griffin. Jones gets his vindication via a first round knockout. Roy Jones Jr. ruled the light heavyweight division. People don't realize He's really a 168 pounder, but he's fighting these big guys at 175. These guys are 6'2", and they walk around at 200 pounds. Virgil Hill was a legitimate big man with a long reach and a deadly jab. I fainted. I touched with the hook up top. I rushed the body, shot down to the right. And so far, it's Jones's power over Hill's jab. Oh! Right to the body, down the bird off. The shot sound like a 22 rifle going on. Pow! Hill's jab. Oh! I think that was the hardest body shot I've saw thrown throughout my whole coaching and boxing career. He's holding the kidney area on the right side. Find out later that he did break a ring. Even men bigger and stronger than Roy were no match for him. And the one-time middleweight considered taking on the ultimate opponent in prize fighting, a true heavyweight. I was very strong, very strong going to fight Buster Douglas because I had heard from Douglas's camp, some people there, that he was just a shell of himself. In the winter of 98, a promoter came up with $6 million for a match between Roy and the now fading former champion, Buster Douglas. Despite nearly six years of almost total silence, Roy Sr. came forward. His father would not let him fight Buster Douglas. The thing I know about Roy is, if he get hurt, he won't quit. They have to kill him, you know what I mean? Not saying that he can't whoop him. It's just too much mass, you know what I mean? I just wouldn't run a Volkswagen into a Big Mac truck. At his father's urging, Roy pulled out of the negotiations, and they began a slow, cautious reconciliation. When they kind of first got back into it, you know, they just didn't come right out like, hey, Dad, I love you, sorry, that kind of thing. It was like, oh, how, how are the chickens? When we get older, we get, we, we get to the point that we're either learn to accept the fact that, you know, we screwed up, how uh, we done something wrong, you know what I mean? But still, you have to look at it like there's a reason for everything. Defense left, 20 seconds. All the pressure that my dad did put on when I, was, when I was a kid, all he made me grow closer to God, because I knew that only God could get me through that and make me to be what I am today. During the long years of estrangement from his father, Roy Jones Jr. had become a father himself. Yo. But he ain't around, they seem to find a reason. I know some he has a set of twin boys and a third son, a toddler. No matter what. Parenthood is a tough thing, is what people don't realize. And a lot of times you don't realize how tough it is until you get in that position yourself. Roy has regular visits with his youngest, Roy Jones III, and gained custody of the twins in 1999 when they were seven years old. Hey, my youngest son and my set of twins, we're the best of friends. We just go out and hang together. Take my boys to do stuff, teach them how to fish, teach them how to plant, teach them ways of survival so in case something happens to me, knowing that they're going to be all right because they know how to survive because that was passed down to me from my dad and I passed it on down to them. I feel that. Roy spends as much time with his kids as he can, sharing music together, playing games and sports, everything but boxing. Roy's determined not to repeat the mistakes of the past. He's done a great as father, and I think he's gonna even get better, but he might end up being a better father than I will. Mm. But that's the way it's supposed to be. Do a better job with mine than my father did with me, and mine can probably do a better job with them than I'd be able to do with them. So as long as we constantly get better, then I think it's all good. 
Despite all his great success, Roy is haunted by the brutality he's seen in the sport of boxing. He sat at ringside as an expert commentator as junior lightweight Jimmy Garcia received a lethal beating. And he was devastated by his own bout against Vinny Pazienza, a fighter who had just come back to boxing after suffering a broken neck. So I was afraid he might get re-injured and mess his neck up and may kill him. But I was very afraid. I don't want to kill him, but... Roy is working to help guarantee that all boxers have the kind of autonomy and protection he and his fighters enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, Muhammad Ali and Pensacola's own Roy Jones, Jr. He joined with the legendary Muhammad Ali in support of legislation that helped clean up the boxing industry. Now, how many guys you hear get killed playing baseball? <laughs> how many of you hear get killed playing, playing basketball? But boxing, you hear about guys getting killed. That's the toughest sport out still right now today. And they're the one of the lowest paid sports right now. And it's, I don't, just don't think that's really fair. Meanwhile, Roy is still waiting for a worthy competitor to challenge his crown. And if someone steps forward, there could be no doubt that the terms of such a meeting would be set by Roy Jones Jr. I did it my way. You know, I came in this thing free, and I'm gonna leave out this thing free. You know, I came in, did it just like everybody said I couldn't do. So you're not gonna make it.